Oh man, hey guys, it's Ornlu, and indeed the Mountain Royals DLC is finally upon us. And we got ourselves some three new campaigns here for DE, and I am really looking forward to playing through them. I don't know anything about them other than, you know, the names and then the sibs that they play. But we will be going in ascending difficulty order, so we're going to start with Thoros, the Armenian campaign. Uh, then we're going to go to Ismail, which is the Persian campaign, and then finish with Tamar, which is the Georgian campaign. So, let's just get right into this, shall we? Thoros, let's go. Outlawed! Let's make sure the volume is up. It is folly that we are ruled by a class of firstborns. Men whose sole claim to lordship is being first... Sorry, making it louder. Most of them do nothing but squander their opportunities. Sometimes it is a second son's duty to depose his incompetent brother and rule in his stead. I am one such man, and you, young squire, might one day become one as well. Yet even I do not compare to Thoros the Great, the second son of the Cilician Armenian king. Thoros supplanted his older brother and became the heir of his father's kingdom. Yet, it was a frail inheritance, as the Byzantine Empire had its sights set on the realm. The Byzantines still nurtured the vain Roman dream of ruling all of the Mediterranean. And Cilician Armenia, weak and divided after years of internal strife, was an easy target. The Byzantines took the kingdom easily, and threw Thoros and his father into the deepest dungeon in Constantinople. It is said that the Cilician Armenian king was brutally executed on the Emperor's orders. But Thoros was not his father. Using the charisma that the latter had sorely lacked, he managed to sway his captors into postponing his death. Some even whisper that Thoros seduced a Greek princess into helping him escape the prison and board a ship to Cilicia. Having met the persuasive man on a few occasions, I am inclined to believe that the stories are actually true. Now an outlaw with no following, Thoros found his homeland overrun and his family seat occupied by Byzantine forces. The once proud kingdom was in a sorry state, one which the landless prince was determined to change. Alrighty, that was quite the intro. Retake your family home, Vaca Castle, by eliminating the Byzantine forces guarding it. Thoros must survive. We are restricted to the castle age and a population limit of 125. If Thoros dies before Vaka castle is recaptured, the mission is lost, but do not hesitate to send Thoros into combat after you've taken the castle. Should he be wounded, he'll retreat and then fight again once he recovered. Thoros' brothers Stefan and Mleh were never captured by the Byzantines and both are hiding in nearby mountains. Visit them and convince them to join in the rebellion. The sea offers plenty of food for your fishing ships, but beware of Byzantine vessels patrolling the coast. And we have our mule carts. Okay, so Thoros' return is not yet known to the Armenians. However, as soon as he, uh, as soon as the prince reveals himself, fighters were willing to help take Cilician Armenia should appear. Near the beach where Thoros disembarked is his family's old seat, Vaca Castle, which a Byzantine garrison of infantry and arch archers occupies. To the north are other Byzantine-controlled castles held by swordsmen, like and skirmishers. Should the Byzantines be attacked, they will likely send cataphracts into battle as well. Thoros' brothers, Stefan and Bleh, could be held against the occupiers. Stefan has retreated to a hidden mountain monastery to the west, while Bleh uh, resides in a village to the east. Uh, the Seljuks claim the Armenian, Armenian territories to the southeast, but it may be possible to temporarily come to terms with them. Alrighty. Vaka Castle, my old home. <laughs> to see it in the hands of the greedy Byzantines is a disgrace to my fond childhood memories. I will need soldiers to take back what is right. Old peasant. Mine. I cannot believe my weary eyes. Oh my goodness. It is you, Thoros, saw so the rumors about your escape were true after all. 
Thanks, old peasant. Really appreciate it. We have longs for your return, Prince Toros. Let us drive the insidious Byzantines out of your castle and avenge your father's death. All right, Thoros must survive. At least 10 soldiers also must survive. We have 21, and we have some resources. We just have these two barracks. Okay, so I'm not sure how we could spend the extra 55 food, but we have enough for log swordsmen, pikemen, and squires, which should be very helpful. They seem to have some uh, Feudal Age men-at-arms, some crossbowmen, but only Feudal Age upgrades. There's a scorpion there but that we need to be careful about. Uh, we ourselves are in the Castle Age. Why well, do I have a feeling that we'll gain control of this village soon enough? Alright, let's go. The pikemen aren't going to be very useful, unfortunately. I cannot afford to lose many men before the castle is recaptured. I guess we'll try and just keep the uh, pikemen kind of out of harm's way. We only have 16 soldiers left. Anyway, for those who are uh, following this live, sorry I haven't really been uploading any videos recently. I have been very, very busy. IRL, but now that the DLC is live, I'm really looking forward to play through these campaigns. There we go. But this is only the beginning. On the grave of my father, I swear I will not rest until all of Armenia is free. I will not rest until all of Armenia is free. That's what you sound like, you goofball. All right, so we have to destroy some Byzantine castles. Very simple to start things off. located the castles from which the Byzantines control our homeland. Let me show you where our enemies are hiding, my prince. Okay, so there are three castles in total. Uh, here's some peasants. Maybe if I... Access to the Mediterranean Sea guarantees us a steady supply of fish. But we must be cautious. Many Byzantine warships patrol these waters. Some villagers have returned from their hiding places in the mountains. We must provide them with mule carts so oh. they can start gathering resources for our army. So... Well, we'll just build the mule cart. It is nice and cheap for the Armenians. 25% off. Remember, we also got our swordsman here in uh, an age earlier, so you bet we're going to be making good use of those, plus our compo composite bowmen, warrior priests, all that good stuff. All right. Get you back to work. I mean, we can just use the same mule card, I think. Okay, Thoros himself is useless. Okay, let's heal you guys up in the castle, actually. We don't have any stone right now, unfortunately, which would be nice. So we can get extra TCs, but we will have to make do for the time being. Anyway, this is a nice little introduction to the mule cart. Of course, it is the uh, unique building. Well, one of the two unique buildings for the Georgians and Armenians. Mobile drop-off site for uh, wood, gold, stone, and hunted food. Your two brothers managed to evade the Byzantines. Perhaps you should pay them each a visit, my friends. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and try and get those guys going. Let's go ahead and pay a visit here to Bleh. Yeah, so we can get all the way up to champions here in the Castle Age, which is pretty cool. And that should be quite strong, although, of course, uh, against Cataphracts, it's still not likely to be great. Uh, 
Oh, oh, that's lots of stone miners. Osa. What's up, Mleh? Thomas, it is you. I am surprised to see you alive and well. Uh, heavily surprised. Sure, dude. We have the local villagers there. Oh, wait. They all toil for us now. You want to march against our Byzantine friend? Um, yes. <laughs> I would love to help you. Really? Alas, as long as their soldiers are roaming my lands, my hands are not hard. Get some composite bowmen going. Yeah, of course, we need to remember to build the uh, fortified church. Oh, did I lose my scout? Oh, no. Also, we have a really good navy as the Armenians. That. You kind of go for a nice mixed army to show off the Civ. It feels so long since I've been playing just regular, official DE campaigns. Your quarrel with the Byzantines is not our affair. But those dogs stole a trade card loaded with precious goods from us. If you return it, we will reward you. Oh, okay, there we are. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Hey, stop it, you. So I don't see any docks here along the Mediterranean, since we should be, like, in the corner of Anatolia. Um, my villagers tell of Byzantine troops marching towards us. The enemy will arrive soon. The enemy will arrive soon. Man, these guys sound uh like they're having a rough time with things. <laughs> I also remember their eco upgrades are more effective. It's really nice. Well the uh the mule cart ones are, not the farm ones. That's a Sicilian bonus. Stop being a butt. Okay, get two handed swordsmen. Oh, yeah, now we can use Thoros in battle, that's right. See, so remember the composite bowmen are the ones that ignore armor. Uh, no. Oh yeah, I need to send Thoros over to uh, Stefan. Oh, there he is up in the mountains. Look at that guy with the, the sick bowl cut. What a classy guy. Whoa! Now, what's really important to remember about Composite Bowman is that it does not ignore uh, Siege Weapons armor. I don't actually know how the mechanics of that work. Oh, that's a nice looking monastery. Oh! This poor guy is just stuck. Thoros, you are alive. I lost most of my men and had to retreat here. Provide me with fresh troops and I will fight alongside you. Okie dokie. Scott, for you. If I can click, which is unlikely, I sign another batch. Gambesons. Run away! 
Don't really, yeah, don't really know where the docks are. I think they must be upriver. Ah! <laughs> Okay, well, that's going fine. Let's get a university. Thank you, my brother. Let us crush those wretched Byzantines. Crush them. Let's be smart and get ourselves uh, some protection. Still getting used to the new sims. But yeah, the warrior priests are going to heal us up. Get some more composite bowmen. And things are more or less going fine. Once we have enough troops, we'll go ahead and take down uh, that fort and get the Seldrix guys back. Yeah, Armenian defenses aren't as good as the Georgian defenses, but that they're still good. And the mule carts can garrison inside the fortified churches as well. Now, the warrior priests do have a slower healing speed than monks before uh, Ferretchers, their Imperial Age unique tech. So that's something to keep in mind as well. It's like 18% slower, something like that. Yeah. Oh, that'd be a good upgrade. Well, they are at least attacking us at a pretty steady clip. Go get him! Ah, oh, need murder holes. Whoa! Stop it, you! Okay. Onward and upward. I don't really see the need to go into the, uh, into Halbs. They're just not making enough stuff that's I, I need Halbs for. Like, they have some light cap, but Swords can build light cap just fine. Okay, let's repair you. Death! Okay. Go over there. Man, that wood income is crazy good. <laughs> Oh, you guys are having fun. Stefan, don't be a dummy. There we go. Castle Age champions feel good, man. Yeah, the fact that Georgians can improve this really low base attack is quite helpful. Bleh. 
Okay. Let's go ahead and free the other village. We probably don't need this. Like, if we really wanted to, we could just go Thank ahead and kill them. Oh! Thanks, Seljux. I am duly grateful. Alright, uh, are 11 troops gonna be enough to take these guys down? They really don't have good upgrades. And then we can start prepping our siege. Probably go for this castle and then, I don't know, maybe that castle. The one to the north is probably the toughest one to take down, so let's do that. Oh shoot, I forgot to uh, check the achievements. Oh, this new user interface. So many achievements. Okay. Um, anything here? Okay, so nothing in this one. Good. Yeah, as we go through this, we'll get all the achievements. Because I like maintaining my perfect record. Thank you very much for uh, having all the achievements in the game. That. Oh. Have two mule carts. But two mule carts is better than one mule cart. It is well known. Also, I really don't need this many villagers. Go after the castle there. How are you guys doing? You're making it there slowly but steadily. If only you could garrison like your composite bowmen. But yeah, look at these guys versus skirms. You take bonus, like you take the skirm bonus damage, so it's not like skirms are useless versus the composite bowmen, but the composite bowmen are at least less hard countered than most. Oh! Well, that certainly makes our life a lot easier. Probably didn't need that. You have no idea how many times I have tried to expel this rubble myself. This will no longer house Byzantine soldiers. <laughs> says Mla. All right, onward and upward. We have secured one of the areas. This is a fun save. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the focus is actually on Georgians and not Armenians with new DLC. It's probably because Georgians are the Cavs of. And those are generally more popular. Armenians are, are most likely harder to play because they revolve around monks and these warrior priests, which are expensive and somewhat fragile. Oh, well, I mean, they have a bunch of HP, but, you know, they're slow. So yeah, I'm still a little worried that the fortified churches are OP. But at the very least, I think... I, I, if they are OP, they're just overtuned. I don't think they'll necessarily be inherently 
broken. Like, Warlord starts tomorrow as I'm casting this on, uh, on Halloween. And I'll be interested to see how popular or successful the new civs are, because they are going to be enabled. Also, shout out to my Twitch channel, where I cast all the time. In fact, I cast more on Twitch than I spend time making YouTube videos these days. It's always in the description. Twitch.tv underscore Ornlu AoE. Or get to heal up all of our injured units. Okay, now here is where the cow. Holy cow! Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. We may need to fall back. Run away! Oh, no, but these are champions and the warrior priests doing work. We have a regular monk here that I trained. I don't remember training. But yeah, this, this is your basic solid intro scenario. No, uh, no complaints. Nothing too flashy. I, 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 for this being an intro scenario, the Romans, Byzantines... They're putting up at least a little bit of the fight. But even in the more straightforward scenarios, I like having side objectives and stuff to do while like, you're building up to your big army in a build and destroy type scenario. And definitely let me know in the comments, if you went for this castle instead, uh, do they send a lot of cataphracts at you over here? Because this is probably the most fortified one. More like, uh... The Royal of the Mountains. Uh, do we win? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was a little, little confused. Thoros must have felt invincible as he and his brothers raised the fearless lion banner of his Rubinid dynasty atop it's the battlements lion, of Thaka man. Castle. Against all odds, he had managed to liberate a sliver of his lost homeland. The Byzantine emperor was humiliated. Fuming with rage, he dispatched his agents to contact the Hethimids, old rivals of Thoros's family. Just as the Emperor had hoped, Cilicia plunged into civil war as the two families vied for control of the kingdom. Ripperino, man. Well, that's a pretty good KD. Oh, this was just at the very beginning. Uh, yeah, Byzantines had three castles total. This is what the other Byzantine camp fortressy area looks like. You probably took down the two most difficult ones, which is good. I, you know, I want to go through the most challenging way of beating a scenario whenever possible. Oh, but where were their docks? See, like, they had some warships over here. Did I get, maybe they deleted them. No idea. The Seljuk's right there. Good stuff, good stuff. Alrighty, guys, that was Outlawed, the very first scenario of the Mountain Royals. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time for the Emperor's Revenge.